Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at expected outcomes, um, sometimes called relative frequency. Um, it's fairly straightforward, but we'll go through just a couple of questions. So what is it sort of asking? You'll get questions such as, um, I roll a dice or a die a hundred times, and they then might ask you things like, um, how many um, sixes would you expect? Okay. So this is one one type of question you get. How many sixes would I expect? So what we're looking at is the theoretical probability, first of all, that I roll a six, which is one in six chances. That means the probability of that event occurring. Then all I need to do is multiply that by the number of trials. In this case, it is 100. And simply put that into our calculator, 1 over 6 times by 100, which comes up with an answer of 16 and 2 thirds. So how many times would I expect it to happen? Um, 16 and 2 thirds times. Um, or you could even say approximately 17 times. So that's pretty much it. Now, the relative frequency is when they actually give you an example. So they might say, um, let's say a heads and tails question. They might say, okay... Um, I rolled a coin um, 10 times, I got 9 heads and 1 tail. What's the probability that if I threw it 100 more times, what would I get for heads? In that case, you'd say, well, the probability is 9 out of 10, which is still my probability of it happening, but it's just giving you the actual um, experimental numbers, I guess. And then I'll times that by the 100, um, which will then give me, uh, what's that, 900 over 10, which is 90 times I would expect to get heads. So you can see the expected outcomes is pretty straightforward. It's just finding the probability of the event occurring and then multiply it by the number of trials. I have included one more challenging question, um, but most of it's pretty straightforward. So let's have a look at the first one. Two coins are tossed 120 times and the results are recorded. What is the expected number of outcomes for two heads? Okay, well, we know for two heads, um, we could do our um, tree diagram if you were unsure of our two heads, which would give you one in four chances. Remember, this is theoretical probability. I'm then going to multiply that by 120. So 120 times it by one quarter is going to be 30. So I would expect to get 30, um, 30 times. Okay. Now, part B says, what is the expected number of outcomes for a head and a tail? Well, that would be two quarters or a half. So a half times 120 is 60. And once again, I've got my answer. Okay, again, pretty straightforward. Uh, the next question, a little bit longer. A bag contains six yellow discs, so six yellows and five reds. Okay, two discs, so two discs are drawn in succession from the bag. The first disc is not replaced before the second is drawn. The process is repeated 352 times. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up with a table, like a tree diagram, and say, okay, so I've got uh, my first disc, I've got uh, yellow and then red. My second disc, I've got yellow, then red, yellow, then red, kind of like that last uh, lesson we were doing. Now, probability for the yellow um, will be 6 over 11, and then the red will be 5 out of 11. Now, if I take yellow the first time, I've got 5 out of 10 red, um, out of 10 discs left over, and I've got 5 out of 10, obviously, for the red. If I took a red the first time, it means there are 6 yellows still there, so 6 out of 10, but that will leave 4 out of 10 there. So that will hopefully help me to get the probabilities going the first time. How many of the first discs are expected to be yellow discs? Okay, so that's just asking about the one or the first draw. So the probability for yellow is six out of 11. I'm doing this 352 times. So on my calculator, I'm doing six over 11. I'm gonna times that by 352 times and I would get 192 times I'll expect to get a yellow for the first draw. B, how many of the first six are expected to be red? Well, obviously, the what's left over from 352. Um, or I could just type in 5 out of 11 times that by our 352. Either will work. But in that case, it will be 160 if I do it that way. 
or I could just subtract that from 352. C, um, how many double yellow discs are expected? Well, double yellow would be the 6 11ths and 5 tenths. So 6 over 11 times 5 over 10. That gets me the probability of double yellows, but I'm doing that 352 times. So again, on my calculator, I'm doing 6 over 11 times it by 5 over 10. That gives my probability. And then I'm going to times that 352 times. I would expect to get it uh, 96 times. Uh, for D, it says how many double red discs are expected? Well, the same process, but just with red. 5 elevenths times 4 tenths. That's my probability for two reds. And I'm going to times that by 352. And I'm going to put that into my calculator and just calculate it as I did previously. So that will come up with... Uh, 64 times I would expect that to happen. E, how many are expected to have a first disc yellow and a second disc red? Well, first disc yellow and second disc red will only happen for that first place. So yellow then red. So it's going to be 6 out of 11 times 5 out of 10. And I'm going to times that by 352. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. Now, actually, that's going to be the same result, isn't it, as the uh, double, as a doubles, I, I believe. So that's going to be uh, 96, a little bit quicker. And then F is to reverse. How many would I expect to get a first disc of red, then second disc yellow? Well, that will be uh, red, then yellow. So 5 elevenths times. Uh, 6 tenths times by 352 and looking at that that's going to give me the same selection of 96. They might ask you about um, getting at least exactly one yellow so in that case you'd add those two amounts together. So that's a bit of a, a long-winded question but you can see I'm combining that probability tree and simply once I found my probability of the event occurring we times it by the number of trials. The last question, which I think is quite challenging, a little bit different. A die has faces numbered 1 to 6. The die is biased. So the number 6 will appear more often than each of the other numbers. The numbers 1 to 5 are equally likely to occur. So that's my numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Because it's biased, the 6 here will be slightly higher than the other ones, although these are all equally likely. It does say um, that the die was rolled 1,200 times and it was noted that the probability of a six occurring, it happened 450 times. So theoretically you're saying we got 450 out of 1,200 times um, a red, so a six occurred. So on my calculator, I'm gonna do 450 out of 1,200 and that will simply tell me that I had 3 over 8 as my probability of that 6 occurring. So 3 in 8 chances. And again, you could double check that by doing 3 over 8 times by 1200. That will come up with a 450. Now, it's given us some options here. Which statement is correct? The probability of rolling a 5 is expected to be 1 in 7. Well, that wouldn't be, really work out, would it? Now, I could sort of say I've got one chance here, one chance here, one chance here, one chance here, one chance here. They're all now equally likely. Let's say, for example, I had two chances here. That would make it two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would make it one in seven chances, but that would mean the probability for the six would be two in seven, which we know it's not correct. It needs to be three in eight. So how about we try putting a three there? So now, now I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I've got three chances in eight of it being a six. And look, that's what I've got there, which means that the chance of a six occurring is three times more likely than any other number, which automatically gives me C as my answer. Now, of course, I'm going to double check, um, just make sure D isn't an option. 
the probability of rolling an even number is expected to be equal to the probability of rolling an odd number. Well, that one can't be true because it, we already know that the six is more likely than the other one. So it means that the evens have a better chance of happening. So we know it can't be D. So we are correct with having C. That's a much more challenging question. Certainly, I'd say it'd be band five or a band six question, um, but it gives you an idea of some of the harder questions that are out there. But for the most part, we simply know for our expected outcome, the probability of the event occurring times it by the number of trials that you're doing it. Have an awesome day, folks. Get through the questions. And let me know if you have any problems.